Hello students and today we are interested in understanding how the components of a vector will transform under a coordinate transformation which are equation number 3, 5 and 4 and these three equations have been obtained in the last class. If I am going to write it in the case of the cylindrical polar coordinate system and this equality is what we are saying that it is invariant. Invariant means it doesn't change. Vector itself doesn't change. But what is changing? What is changing is Ax. Here let me show you. This Ax is now changed to A rho. That means changed means numerical value. Number. The number is a totally different number. You can't have the same number. It won't be so. These things are known as components. So what is not changing? The vector itself is not changing, but however, what is changing is these components will change. So right now we have 5. So let me say that this is equation number 6. So you are going to use equation number 3, 5, 4 and 6. All these things together to get the answer. So let us therefore substitute in equation number 6. Then Ay. Then you have a plus. The last one is the easiest one. There is nothing to do. It is Az multiplied by Az unit vector. And that's all. We have now substituted equation number 3, 4, 5 into equation number 6. So let us now simplify this. Okay. Whatever is there inside the brace. Brace means this one. So this is the left brace this is the right brace if you are going to use this this is the left bracket this is right bracket if you are going to use like this this is the left parenthesis this is the right parenthesis so we have different names for that so this is brace so that's what we are using so anything inside the brace would be the component corresponding to that unit vector so this is the ax unit vector so whatever inside the brace is there that component similarly for y so if it is so okay th then so the x component x component is ax ax will be equal to whatever is here in the white color shade will be written as a rho into cos phi then minus a phi multiplied by sine phi and that's all you got one equation and let us say that this is equation number 8 and similarly we will be getting the equation for the a y and that's it over you have completed your calculation and we have to write down only the some conclusion so what is the conclusion what do you understand from here we understand something that the x component of the vector that is the meaning of ax the x component of the vector is equal to this kind of combination so certainly this cannot be a rho you see this this cannot be a rho because we are doing some calculations here so which means that the x component of the a vector has got changed to something new value here on the right hand side similarly the y component of the vector a has been changed to something different value as given by the right hand side here if you are going to any other coordinate system especially the spherical polar coordinate system all the three components will change change is something easy english word to understand but mathematically the word used for change is transformed to a new value and that is because of the coordinate transformation so let us say that we are rewrite equation number 8 9 and 10 in the matrix notation so you will be getting a cos phi So you should get a cos phi so that when you multiply by this you will get this then the second one will be a minus of the sine phi minus of the sine phi and then the last one yeah last one there are no z components so i will put a zero there is no you see here in the equation number eight you don't have anything with the z so a z is not there therefore this should be a zero here and similarly come to equation number nine so for nine what is there a phi you see here a phi is getting multiplied by cos phi and a rho is multiplied by sin phi so a rho is multiplied by sin phi so therefore this must be a sin phi 
then the next should be a cos phi. You don't have any z component in the equation number 9. Therefore, 0. And a z is, you don't have anything with a rho. You don't have anything with the phi. You have only 1 times a z. And that's all. You got this equation. So, equation number 8, 9, 10. Instead of writing 3 equations, if you write it in the matrix form, we got only one equation. Now, you don't say that this is 3. Even though all the 3 equations are available here, we say that this is a single equation. So, let us give a new number, which is equation number 11. This matrix is known as the, the transformation matrix. I will write down this. From cylindrical to Cartesian. Okay. What will happen if it is otherwise? So, you can now say that then suppose if you are going to uh, do the reverse calculation, then you write down that and then and how do you fill it? A filling is very easy. I will tell you that all this row will be changed to column. That means simply you have to take the transpose. All the row you write it as column and all the column you write it as row. So, shall we write like this? So, this will be a cos phi then that will be a sin phi and that will be a 0 because how how this came you must you please verify how it is coming now this cos phi sin phi 0 is in the column i am you see the green color cursor it is moving in the column those elements you take it and then write it in the row now the green color cursor is moving in the row so in this direction you have to write down so if you write like this then your transformation is over. So, it is a very simple and interesting property which right now you don't have to worry. Coordinate transformation has this interesting property that if you take the transpose of the matrix, you can do the inverse coordinate transformation. Okay. So, the next one would be a minus of sin phi. Second column I am writing now. Then there is a cos phi. Then there is a 0. So, that will be the equation number 12. And that's all. So, you, what is the aim of uh, today's class? Today's aim is to find out how the components of a vector will transform. That is what is our aim. Uh, did you get the answer? Yes, you got the answer. It is equation number 11 and 12. So, our conclusion is this. The conclusion is that equation number 11 and 12 gives the information on how the components of vector will transform under the cylindrical to Cartesian and vice versa coordinate transformation uh, because you have two equations uh, I, we have the double sided arrow because 11 is there 12 is there so each one equation will take care of one arrow so that is our conclusion and we will try to understand more about this if you are going to choose a numerical example till, till now we have seen what is the relation between the cartesian to the cylindrical polar system and we have also seen the relation between the unit vectors followed by how the components will transform. So, let us take a, a one or two examples or numerical examples that we will do in the next class. Okay.